when you're rowing down the street off a thousand wheel horsepower stick shift Mustang or anything stick shift making a thousand wheel, yeah. it's rowdy every single time. <laughs> And it's different every single time. I don't know if you know too much about the LS, but can you talk about that? I have a CTSV. I got a four-way stroker CTSV. You know, I give my respects to LS, but I'd pick a Coyote over an LS any day of the week. If you wanted to do out of the three generations to make a thousand wheel, I would do a Gen 2 personally. Those motors are King Daddy. So now if you put the Whipple on, right? Mm -hmm. When you're making that kind of power, is it like instant? Or Dude, it hits like a drunk step down. It hits hard. That's $10,000 LS or Coyote. Okay. No labor included. I'd stick with the Coyote still. Why are Mustangs known for like always crashing? So actually, <laughs> it's an advanced track thing. Once you turn that off, then you don't, you don't crash in the crowd, right? Welcome back to another episode of the Street Alpha Podcast. I'm your host, Tooks, and today we are in Coyote House with Joe Ward. Let's clap it up for Joe Ward at Coyote House. Oh, we got appreciate clap. it. Appreciate it. <laughs> Thank so, you for having me, man. So um, I appreciate you. This is a pretty dope setup, thanks to the, you know, the Mustangs in the background. So Joe is going to try to convince me to buy a Coyote. As you guys know, I have a, a Supra with the B58 not a Mark IV, 2J. But apparently from the conversation we had last week, you told me that this platform has a lot of potential to make power. Absolutely. So um, we'll talk about that. And hopefully you can convince me to switch over to American Muscle. Maybe, I, maybe I'll get a Mustang or something like One that. One day. Yeah, One I, gotta be, I gotta be riding out with my guy, uh, my guy Yuri over here who has a crazy build. <laughs> um, Fast guy so shit. How long have you been working on Mustangs? Do you only work on like coyotes or correct so i work on specifically the coyote platform coyote voodoo predator okay um coyote started uh 2011 which is the gen 1 11 to 14 then you got the gen 2s 15 to 17s gen 3s 18 to 22s and then now the gen 4s which is the 22 2024s 2024s yes so this this whole coyote platform started in 2011 correct correct it was a 4.6 liter before uh at 2010 so those guys got shafted sorry for the four six guys, <laughs> but um, yeah, I feel bad for the guys that bought a four six uh, from twenty ten because directly year after twenty eleven, Coyotes came out and it was a huge power bump. So, what made you want to go with the Coyote platform and actually start working on Mustangs with this? So, I got I bought this car back in senior year of high school. So, I've had it since I was sixteen seventeen. I bought it because I was like, cool Mustang, you know. Yeah. Had no idea the platform. Had no idea. I was like, oh, cool cars, you know. And then once I started doing research, I was like, yeah, people are making some power with these cars, you know? So yeah. I started out with basic bolt-ons, you know, did the intake, intake manifold, headers, E85, simple stuff. Then I started, you know, expanding into the Paxtons, the superchargers, the turbos, and then um, started taking it pretty seriously about two years ago, got into a shop with uh, one of my buddies and uh, it expanded to where we are now. Just got a new shop, freshly renovated, trying to figure that all out. So, <laughs> you know, we're doing good. I appreciate all the people that have trusted me working on their cars and it's, it's nice. I thank you all <laughs> and uh, led me to where I'm at now. So you were um, working out of, from home and then obviously you, you, you moved up to a shop. Yeah, man, I was working, we were building my car in the, in the driveway. That's pretty. That's Me and pretty my typical. boys, bro. Yeah. 110 degrees. We put the Paxton on in 10 degree weather because I was like, the supercharger's got to go on, man, you know? <laughs> then I got got by two BMWs. I'm like, I'm selling that shit. Oh, shit, really? Oh, yeah. What bro. kind of BMWs? Two F80 M3s. So got the Ooh. Paxton on 93. I'm like, yo, I'm hot shit. Got walked. <laughs> walked. Immediately sold the, the Paxton. Five. Was like, I'm going turbo. That's it. Damn. Yeah, the S55 is hitting probably. That's crazy. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> I was like, come so, on. Can you talk about that a little bit? Because I noticed that a lot of people that I, I'm, I'm coming in contact with now who, who are at shops, they start the same way you did. Yep. So do you have any like advice for people who are trying to move into a shop, especially in New York, because it's, it's expensive out here to, to Absolutely. have a shop? My main advice is you, you got you to gotta spend the money. If you're doing it yourself, you got to spend the money. You okay. got to learn. You got to break shit. No matter what you do, you right. need to have hands on. You're going to mess it up. I've messed up so many times on the road to this, you know, dumb mistakes, but then you learn to never make those mistakes again, you right. know? And that's what I try to tell even kids nowadays. Like they'll come to me, they want me to put this part on and I'm like, listen, man, I can charge you no problem, but you can do it yourself. I'll help you. I'll FaceTime you, whatever you need, you know, yeah. cause I'd rather have the kids know how to work on their cars 
basic stuff. Don't go building your motor by yourself. Don't go trying to do this or that. But you know, on the basic stuff, you know, try to learn it yourself. And then when you get to that point of you start working on your buddy's cars and then you get comfortable enough where you want to, let's say, start charging people or set up a tent in your yard or get a shop. Yeah. You know, you just step up through the ladder, always ask questions, even if they're stupid, you right. know, always ask questions. Um, I'm one of them, you know, I ask the dumbest question, but I want to know, you know? Yeah. I ask dumb ass questions all the time. You have to, <laughs> you have to, I'm like, listen, I'm sorry, man, but you know, I want to know. Yeah. I ask dumb questions and I get flamed for it a lot because people are like, what kind of question is that? Or how do you have a podcast without even knowing about cars? But as most people know, like when you get into a car, you don't know every single platform, Absolutely. you know, like I got into Hondas. That was my first car. So I yep. obviously wanted to build that up. So for you, I'm sure it was, you know, American. So it's, yep. it's, it's different, you know? Absolutely. So I'm trying to learn more about the American oh, platform. We'll go in depth, definitely. You gotta have an appreciation for all platforms. Always, always. I gotta gap by a few Hondas to show some respect. <laughs> Laptop so. Civic? Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. A little spoon engine, you know, so. <laughs> so if I, have, if I have a budget, I'm only saying budget now because when you're younger, you kind of have minimal amount of money, right? Correct. So what are some options, before we get into that Coyote platform, what are some options for somebody with like a small budget and they wanna build an American car? What can they do it with? As in all around year make model or? Uh, let's say Mustangs. Honestly, I mean, we can do like a basic bolt on package, get you at around 470 to four, 470 to 500 wheel, depending what generation. What's a, what's a bolt on for an American? So for me, bolt on now is like a downpipe in like. Gotcha. You know so it's for like the Coyotes, else. as the Coyote guys know, bolt ons is intake manifold, injectors if you need them, okay. headers, um, a tune. Um, and Damn, an injectors are bolt on, huh? Yeah, it, yeah, we, we classified as that. I mean, you know, it's only a four bolt fuel rail, bolts right on. Okay. So, damn, that just changes it up a little bit because now for me, like, it's so hard to go away from having just like a downpipe on my car in tune. Yeah, you, you're very minimalistic. We have to do a few <laughs> things, you know, but honestly, it's such a it's such a simple setup. You're in it like five or six grand realistically with That's not tuning. Bad. Yeah, it's not bad at all. You get like 470, 500 wheel, depending what generation, of course, you yeah. know, the gen threes will make some more power. Um, the gen ones and twos, you know, you'll get 450, 470, depending on the setup, you know? Right. So again, so many options. So the, the most common thing you hear is like, oh, just get an LS and, you know, make some power with that. I hear that all the time. Even the argument that I've had before on a different episode about uh, American muscle and building it for cheap. Yep. So I don't know if you know too much about the LS, but can you talk about that? I'm not too well versed in the LS. So I have yeah. a few buddies that have LS, LSs right. and they're great motors, you know. Um, they're definitely on the cheaper side. They fit in a, a wide variety of vehicles. You know, you could right. swap them into anything. Um, they're decent, you know. <laughs> they're I decent. like them. I like them. I have a I have a CTSV. I got a four weight stroker CTSV. Okay, you know. So, you know, I give my respects to LS. But if it was me, any day of the week, I'd pick a Coyote over an LS any day of the week. I don't care Why? what setup it is. Why? Why is that? So these motors, little small block Ford action. You know, these stock motors, we'll we'll put them to a thousand wheel, no problem. Um, is it going to last forever? No, but we can do it unopened, unopened. I won't even throw oil pump gears in it just to make a statement, you know, oil pump gears for the stock motor. People start saying when you open up a stock motor coyote to put oil pump gears in, it's, oh, it's unopened. It's unopened. We're throwing oil pump gears in it. You know, I want to add any power to it. Yeah. It's not adding anything besides just safety. You know, we'll keep stock valve springs, stock heads, stock cams, stock bottom end, make a thousand wheel. No problem. You give me a gen two, a little bit of boost, E85, we're flying. Hold on. <laughs> so. Gen, what, what gen is the best to have then to make power? Because there's different generations, obviously. You said one, yes, two, and three. So you correct. said you can make a thousand on that. Is it all of them or just so the So the gen ones, like my car, they have the weaker rods. So okay. you can. I have had a few people, or there is a lot of people that make a thousand wheel. It's not recommended. You could do it. But if you wanted to do out of the three generations um, to make a thousand wheel, I would do a gen two personally. Um, those motors are king daddy. Those things just take what you throw at them. I'll throw 17 pounds at it, no problem, until the valves start floating. <laughs> this guy is crazy. <laughs> you know? And then we'll throw some valve springs in it. If you want to do some head studs, we'll do head studs. But at that point, if you're opening the motor, just throw a short block in it. Swap the heads over, valve springs, retainers. We're on now, our way. Now, are all these parts interchangeable between Gen 1 and 3? Correct. So that's a mod, it's a modular motor. Okay. So what we can do, we do like Frankenstein setups, like a 3, 2, 1. As in, the first number is the motor, the short block. The second number is the heads. And then the third number is your timing. So you would do a three, two, one, gen three, bottom end, gen two heads, gen one timing. Um, your timing 
correlates to what generation your car is. So if you have a Gen 1, you need Gen 1 cams. If you have Gen 2, you need Gen 2 cams. It's just how it goes with the ECU. Mm. So, but we could even do a 311. My motor prior to this one, it was a Gen 3 bottom end, Gen 1 heads, Gen 1 timing. Yeah. So super interchangeable. We could do 5.2 Voodoo blocks. I'm sorry, 5.2 Predator blocks, which a lot of guys are doing. Those heads slap right on. So I could throw Gen 1 heads on it, Gen 2 heads on it. No problem. So everything is interchangeable. Even In a sense, yeah, there is some... Like Gen 3 heads can't because you have DI. Right. So um, the Gen 3 heads won't fit on like a Gen... Well, let me think here. Let me do some math. <laughs> I love that. I'm going to make the math math, <laughs> you know. Um, you can throw... I don't know if many guys have thrown a Gen 3 head on like a Gen 1. I'm not sure if you could do that or not. What would be the benefit of doing that? I think though? you could. No, no, it's just if you have a Gen 3 since the ECU is different, you have to keep the Gen 3 heads on it because direct injection. Oh, so the Gen 3s are port, are they port and yeah, direct Yeah, 16 injection? injectors. Yeah, direct injection injectors. Okay. Yeah, and port. So it, that's not, so does that allow you to run higher compression when you have that? Or? In a sense, it just, I'm not really sure. They're kind of just a secondary as in a sense of helps it, direct injection. So okay. like putting this aspect of this, if we do like uh, 1050X injectors for a Gen 1, since it's only eight injectors, I'll need 1300s. For a 18 plus a Gen 3, you could do 1050s and it kind of equates to 1300cc injectors because you have that little added on the bottom. Mm. You know what I mean? Um, I'm still not convinced, not going to lie. Okay. <laughs> I'm not convinced because it's, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot of information. It is a lot of information. Right? So... Um, I'm not familiar with Mustang platform at all, actually. Yep. So build me a car right now. Let's say if I have, all right, you know what do, let's do, let's do a, a body, a chassis. Okay. And let's do the motor and whatever motor configuration you feel is best gotcha. for me at, at the lowest price. At the lowest price. You're looking for boosted like how much power are you going for? Good topic. Good topic. Um, cause it all correlates. Let's say... Let's say like 800. All right, 800, you're gonna need E85. So we'll factor in fuel system, bigger injectors. Um, I'm assuming turbo, we'll just go with the base turbo. Um, so you, the, can't make, you can't make 800 without, without boost? No, no shot. Okay. No shot. You could do nitrous, you know, but easiest way is boost. These things love boost, love boost. So for an 800 wheel horsepower setup, realistically, you could either do, God, there's so many different setups. You could do a Whipple. You could do a twin turbo setup, single turbo setup. Um, are we going for, it's hard to, there's so many different setups. Are we going for straight up race car type shit? Or is it more of just a daily roll racing car? I want to build a street car. I want to build a street car. All yeah. right, cool. Automatic or manual? Ooh, damn. Um, it, all, it all factors in. It's okay. hard, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, this is good because then, you know, I'm, I'm literally learning as, I, as yep. I build the car. So uh, let's say, okay, well. We spoke about that before, though. Yes. There's different transmissions. Yes. All right. Let's say auto. Okay. So I'd set you up with, realistically, I love the 10 speeds. 10 speeds are great. But the 6R80s are a little more reliable. Um, they handle power better. They're more user-friendly. The 10R80s kind of freak out a little bit. Um, weak clutches. Start having some clutch issues even when you upgrade clutches. I'll do a six R80 setup. Ah, no, nah, for 800 wheel, I'll do a 10 R80 setup. Why? Why though? Because that's right on the fine line of 750, 800 wheel for a 10 R80 setup is the sweet spot. Once you start going more, you got to do a built trans, clutches, um, do converter at that time. What if I wanted to, so I like to, I like to overbuild. Okay. But in this situation, we, we probably can't do that, right? But don't you want to like build or have like the most reliable part in there just in case if you do want to make more power later on? You would, you would think that, but yeah. some kids don't. You know, okay. Um, you would always want to. I always try to push people to overbuild the car, usually yeah. in the fuel system aspect. The stock motors are good. Uh, most guys don't want to make a thousand, twelve hundred wheel. You get a few of those guys, you know, but most people, like you said, want 800. So I would do a 10 R80 setup, stock motor, stock trans, um, either an ESS blower kit, which have been absolutely amazing, mm -hmm. or you could do a single turbo or a bottom mount kit. Four triple pump fuel system or double pump. I like the triple because we have a third pump on tap. You know, we could either run it or we keep it unhooked until you're ready to make that big power. Right. You know what I mean? So that would be my realistic setup. 1050X injectors, four double or triple pump setup, stock motor trans and oil pump gears. Which motor though? The Gen 3s. Gen 3? Yeah, Gen 3s are good. Now, with, with that kind of power, 
Is it easy to get power to the ground? They hook, man. When we do some big, big power 10R80 cars or 6R80 cars, we'll throw a 315, 50, 17 on it. So them big boys. I put, I got 325, 50, 15s on my car and it puts a thousand wheel on the street. No problem. Yeah, it's a pretty big tire. Yeah, it moves. So why do, why are Mustangs known for like always crashing? And so <laughs> actually the reason behind that is the advanced track. The advanced track is garbage. Um, it tries to save you in a sense. Like if you do too many pedal yeah. um, oscillations, it'll lock you up completely. What? So absolutely. Yeah. And they oversteer like a motherfucker. So if you're like trying to correct it and most people don't know how to drive, you'll go to whip it back and they just lose it. Yeah. So it's why the, don't they just get rid of that feature? You can do, we do the dyno plug. There's a little plug on the inner fender. Well, I deleted it, but you literally just unplug it and it turns off all advanced track, turns off everything. So once you turn that shit off, then you don't, you don't crash in the crowds, right? I mean, I can't say you won't crash in the crowds <laughs> because if you're a non-driver, you're going to crash. It's, but a, it's a known thing, but nobody ever explained that. To, like, it's yeah, just always a thing. It's an advanced track thing. It's just advanced, advanced track. Yep. Stability track, advanced track. Um, is it an issue when you're at the track actually, like actually drag racing? No, we, we remove that plug. You unplug it and then you get all your lights on the dash, stability track, advanced track off, but it just deactivates it. So it's truly, there's nothing holding you back. Nothing holding you yeah, back. Yeah. You throw you do that one and you're on the dyno as well. Cause the car will freak out. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still not convinced dude. Like it's, it's tough. It's tough to get that. Cause you're getting, what are you making? Like six thirty wheel on a downpipe tune. Nice. So right now downpipe and tune is like five and change. Okay. Low fives. It's, it's tough because NA without like with doing cams, you'll make 550 wheel, right? Like 525, 550. That's what doing cams and that's a little to the bit wheels? of motor work. That's NA, you know, you, to make, you know, 550, 600, 700, you got to boost them. So it is a little bit of an upfront cost. You know, you got to run your pockets a little bit to, to go fast, but that's the only way you just minimal bolt-ons won't do it with these cars. If you want to go fast, you got to go boost have to. And how much money is it going to cost? So realistically, um, I think I quoted a kid the other day. I got pretty fair labor prices. I think it was like 50, I don't know if it was 15 or 20 K. It was a Helion bottom mount kit with oil pump gears, fuel system, um, oil pump gear, fuel system, injectors, and I think a few little, and a boost controller. Um, and that was around the $15,000 package. And, you know, we'll send that car to a thousand wheel. No problem. We'll send it to the trans start slipping. Or the valve start floating, pretty much. So which transmission? Ten already. So that that's good for a thousand. That that stock motor, or the stock trans isn't. We will make a thousand, but we'll find the limitations of the transmissions very quickly. Usually around seven fifty wheel, eight hundred wheel, seventh gear starts slipping. So that's when you got to do a built trans, throw some clutches in it, and then we'll turn it right up. Because then yeah. you have the fuel, you got the motor still. So once we get a built trans in those how, cars, how much is the built transmission? <laughs> Um, we usually use RSA or Richardson transmissions. Um, if we could get our hands on a midnight built trans, you know, those are good transmissions. So they, they make their own transmissions? Yeah, yeah, midnight. Sort of like how Piora has... Uh... Correct, correct. Okay. They've been um, taking it by storm, man. They got, the, they got some of the best transmissions. All three of them, whichever one you go with, you're right. going to be happy with them. They well, do what great would that work. run you for a midnight transition? I think it's like, oh, I don't know on a midnight trans. I personally haven't inquired about one, um, so I don't know. I think the RSA trans, and or it depends what package you get, between 4 and 7 to 8K, depending what package you go with. So it's not as, not as expensive as the B58 trans, yeah, none dude. of that. Well, see, that's, that's kind of cheap. B58. They catch you on the converter. Converter's like 2,500 bucks, so that's where ah, they kind of like get right, you, right, right, you know? Right. You're like, oh, it ain't that bad. Damn, you know? <laughs> 2,500, shit. Yeah, it's, that's because uh, the Pure Trans are pretty pricey, but they hold. They hold the power. Yeah, it's, it's realistically with these platforms, you got to put a little initial investment. You give it boost, you give it fuel, and then when you want to take it to the next level, you throw a built trans or a built motor in it, and then you're really going fast. So, you know, it takes you about 15K, 10 to 15K if you're going through a shop, depending on what parts you get. You can go to a cheap turbo kit. You can go to a really expensive turbo kit like Aldo Welds. Um... It all depends on the user, man. So many different options with these cars. And they all work. Right. You know, they all work. Whipple works. Them things are rowdy. Whipples are rowdy. So um, can you explain how a Whipple works? Yeah, Whipple's a root, roots blower supercharger, so it's driven off the, the crank pulley. So you pretty much have an elaborate scheme of pulleys and combos pretty much of tensioners and, you know, so, spins the blower. Okay. In a dumbed down version, you know, this is, this is one of those dumb questions. Cause this is like one of those dumb questions that, you know, we, we spoke yeah. about earlier. Um, I never looked into it. I know, I know there's pro charges, right? That's Correct. Like similar to a turbocharger, but Correct. not necessarily. Belt driven turbocharger. It's, it's not driven off of the exhaust. 
Correct. Right. So there's a Whipple. Yep. And what other um, power adders are there? You have the centrifugals, like the Paxtons or the Pro Chargers or the ESS kits. Well, those, those are, are like all centrifugals. Turbos, right? Uh, they're belt driven turbos in a sense. So right. that's your centrifugal superchargers. Okay. And then what it, so then a Whipple, can you, can you go into detail about that? Yeah. A Whipple is works? a roots blower. So a pro charger or a centrifugal is usually mounted off to the side or in front of the motor. So it's away from the motor mounted kind of like a turbo. A roots blower is slapped directly on top, like an intake manifold. Mm, okay. So it gives right. you immediate torque. It has down low response. Like you wouldn't read about, you know, you'll make 800 foot pounds of torque at 3000, 3500 RPM. You know, that's absurd. So. So how much power, like what's, what's, what's the most you can make on a Whipple? Like how much can it add as opposed to like going turbo or boosted? I mean, if you go from an NA car for like 450 wheel, yeah. you throw E85 injectors and a Whipple on it. I mean, you'll pick up 400 wheel. Set 400? Eight. Yeah. With so this car right here, actually, um, he's coming in for a 3.0 Whipple, triple pump fuel system, oil pump gears. And, you know, we're going to put this car at, it also has a built trans in it as well. So we're going to do around 850 wheel on street driving. Then we have the party pulley for the track. So... See, now, all right, now you got me looking. You said a 400 horsepower. Oh, yeah, easily. You go from 450, we slap, like, no joke, bro. This car makes 450 wheel. We'll slap it on the dyno and give you proof as well. We'll make, I don't know, 12 to 14 pounds. We'll make eight, 850. No problem. Yeah, on the first rip. Yeah, but, okay, so how much is Whipple? Whipple kit, depending which one you get, because they got stage one, stage twos. You could go, you could find them used for six to eight grand, brand new. They're like 11 to 12K. Oh, that's pretty pricey. <laughs> pricey. They are pricey. See, they it's are like that's like damn. It sounds good. That's 100. what that's what it is. It's like very minimal mods, but yeah. those minimal mods are expensive as fuck. You know, a triple pump fuel system from four is thirty five hundred dollars. You know, yeah. So now, if you put the Whipple on, right? Mm -hmm. um, sounds so weird. If you put the Whipple on, um, when you're making that kind of power, is it like instant or is uh, it more? It's, it's instant. No, it's instant. it is instant. It's not like boost, like turbo. Dude, it hits like a drunk stepdad. <laughs> Shit hits hard. That's crazy. Hard, a truck step bro. That is crazy. What? You want to chuck a rod and throw a whipple on that motherfucker? Sure. Really? Hell yeah. So yeah. a lot of power in the uh, like uh, low, low a lot power. of power right away. Oh yeah. Um. All right. So that opposed to like a supercharger or a procharger, mm -hmm. a similar kind of feel. No, not because at all. Because it's belt driven. Not at all. Well, in what aspect? From a roots blower to a centrifugal, or yeah. you talk. So yeah, way different. So a centrifugal goes by RPM. So if you're looking at a graph, right? If we're looking at a graph, our supercharger line is going to be like this. It's going to stand right up and then either plateau or come back down. With a centrifugal, it comes up at an angle, and you make your peak power from seven thousand to eight thousand RPM. That's where a centrifugal shines. So like mm. for ten R eighty cars, since they stay in such a high rpm for so long yeah an ess or a pro charger is works wonders on these cars because you're in such a high rpm all the time on a manual car i wouldn't do a centrifugal they sound dope love them yeah but you fall out of boost and then it's just you're waiting for it to kick back on it kicks back on for two seconds and it falls out of boost again they're just annoying okay. so that's 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 some good advice right there so yep. now uh what if you have like a th400 a three speed so I recommend Turbo 400s for the guys that want to go real fast, real, real fast. Um, you could throw it on a Whipple. Um, I know guys that have a Paxton 2200 with a Turbo 400, you know, 200 shot of nitrous. Um, JJ Manis, actually. Guy's going pretty fast. I think we went like 860s. With the Paxton 2200, 200 shot with Turbo 400. Shit's moving. But for the turbo cars, like 10R80 guys, right? Okay. For the Gen 3s. You start finding limitations with those transmissions. You could build them for 1200 wheel, but they start freaking out. No matter what you do, they're just not the happiest of transmissions. They always have problems. So because of sensors and stuff, or? not even that. They're just <laughs> put it like this: like they upshift when they want, they downshift when they want. They just oh, does some weird shit, off. you know. That so piss me the fuck off. They're cool transmissions. They they sound cool. They yeah. go fast, but they just have their little quirks that are annoying. And when you make big power, you want to get away from the ten already, or you're just going to be chasing your tail. Mm. So if someone came to me with a Gen Three and said I want to go real fast, I'd say, Yo, JPC Stage Three Turbo Four Hundred. Um, you know, built motor, turbos, and you'll go real fast, real fast. Well, all right. So the the, TH, the Turbo 400, I guess I'll call it that. Yep. I like TH400. It sounds, it sounds Yeah, whichever funny. one. <laughs> so there's a three speed, right? Correct. Now, you mentioned that the Pro Charger. Yep. Is that just like a, is that like a model name or it's just like a. Yeah. So a, what's, the, what's, the, what's the correct term to you? It's a centrifugal supercharger, right? I say Pro Charger because everyone knows what a Pro Charger is. That's you know, like it's kind of just though, like, right? yeah, that's the brand okay. Pro Charger. But okay. everyone correlates Pro Charger to Paxton right. and ESS. They just know. It's like, all right, it's off to the side. It's like NOS. 
In a, exactly. You know what it is. That's yeah. why I say just Pro Charger because everyone's right. like, oh, I know what you're saying. You okay, know? so I'll just I'll stick to Pro Charger. You guys know Correct. what I mean here. Yep. So now the Pro Chargers, uh, because where you're making the power, you said a 10 speed is better because you're up Correct. RPMs, right? So now what about a three speed with that combination? So the three speeds work good. It's just you need a lot of power. Turbo 400s rob power. I wouldn't say it's dramatic, but they do rob power. So you need a little bit more up top. And it's just, if it was me, I wouldn't recommend somebody. Someone came to me that wants to go fast. I wouldn't recommend a, a, a Pro Charger with a turbo 400, I'd be like, yo, go turbos. Cause 95% of the guys go pro charger or yeah. Whipple and they sell it and go turbo. Really? A hundred percent. Because Every of how similar, how similar it is in terms of how no, it power? No, power control. It's pretty much, when we do turbo setups, we can ramp it in when we want it and how much we want it. On a Whipple, it's just all the time. On a centrifugal or a pro charger, you find yourself wanting more and more and more, mm. you know? So on the turbos, there's so much adjustability. I could be cruising on seven pounds. Next thing you know, someone pulls up next to me. I'll crack the bottle, CO2 bottle, be at 13 to 15 pounds, no problem, or 20 pounds, and gap a motherfucker. You know, so <laughs> it's, I like the turbos because it's just user friendly. You could have it do whatever you want, you yeah. know, at any given moment. So now, do you have, do you guys have some type of feature built in where it's like, a, like boost by gear, you know? Yes. So I'm known for stick shift. I love my stick shift racing. This is stick shift. I'll never, ever put a different transmission in this car. And, we set these up with a boost leaves boost by gear. So it's a okay. clutch, it's off a 12 volt clutch activation switch and it cycles through the gears. So each individual gear, it has its preset on boost and then it's a rate. The rate is how fast it comes in. If it's gonna come in like this or if it's gonna come in slow and pick up in each desired gear. So that's what I usually set up on the big power stick shift guys that go turbo. Um, either do that or a Cortex. Um, mm -hmm. That's another boost controller. The best one you could get is AMS 2000, start doing boost by mile an hour. That's when, you know, you could really throw some power on the street at least and the track. That's one of the best boost managements right there. So you literally just mash the pedal all the way to the floor and it'll, it'll, it'll still be at. Yeah, in a sense, like you got to dial it in and right. you need to find what PSI works on the street and how right. much power you could actually put down. Is that, is that an issue with like the newer models at all? No. Like the Gen 3s or anything like that? Oh, uh, the Gen 3s are annoying. You got to put a, they're ground activated. So you because have to put a little relay. Yeah, well, yeah. Well, for the manuals on the Gen 3s, um, so you can't do so you can't do like a boost by gear on a on an auto. No, no, it just goes by time, time or mile an hour. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, boost by gear is usually for the manuals, or it's primarily for the manuals. So what do autos do for 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 boost control? We do same thing. We do a boost leash, um, e boost two, AMS two thousand. You do boost by mile an hour or boost by uh, time. So at two seconds, it makes twenty pounds. And at three seconds, it makes 30 pounds. Or it makes 30 pounds in one second. You know, you could have it do whatever you want. Gotcha. And it's cool because you could correlate that to your quarter mile. So you'll look at the video, you'll play the video, put it side by side. Yeah. And you could correlate down the track like, yo, car spinning five seconds in, lower the boost down. Oh, that's or, fire. You know what that's I mean? Fire. Or it's taking the power down low, let's add boost in faster. You yeah. know what I mean? So it's a lot of adjustability. A lot. Damn. Yeah. Okay, so by second sounds fire though. I never, I never knew that. Oh, yeah. I never knew that. Oh yeah, then you have I, mile an hour too. Which, you do mile an hour too. Oh hell yeah, hell yeah. Because you, you know, can't tell, but if you're if you're watching a run at the track, you really can't tell how fast you're going. It's no, the track, they right? data log though. Like the new controllers, they data log. Okay. So they'll show you how much it made and how what the graph of how linear it is. Right. You know, right. then you can kind of correlate it to where you are down track, um, or the time in the past. You know, like once the data log starts, you'll see you yeah. can correlate it. So the time shit is dope though, because yeah, it's real cool. If you, if you could watch your car and you know when you you know. Taking yeah. off, that's pretty fire. Yeah, it's Definitely a good tool that. to have, man. It really is. It helps. What are you guys doing for ECU? Stock ECU. Stock ECU, you can make all this power. Oh, hell yeah. Lund Racing just went 680, what was it? 684, 686, someone correct me, at like 209 on a factory ECU 6R80 transmission. He went what? Factory 6R80, built of course. No, how fast he go? He went 684 at 209. Factory transmission, factory ECU, factory TCU. When you say factory, like it's it still it has came in the car, factory. No modules, no no add-ons, no bullshit, just factory ECU. Oh yeah. Six oh, yeah. seconds is wild. Lund what is Lund is King Daddy, man. That's they crazy. They put it on the table with that one. What if, so what, what kind of setup does he have on his car, you think? I think it's a twin turbo setup, built motor. I don't know the specifications right, on his right. car, but Lund is Hands down, one of the best tuners for the Coyote platform. There is other great tuners. Yeah. I'm not saying Lund is the best, but that's just who I use. 
I've had no problems with them. They're the coolest guys. Um, and they like going fast. So we always rep them, always rep them. But there's good guys too. You know, you got Vapor Performance, you got Palm Beach Dino, you got Rob Shoemaker. There's so, you got Tricky, you got Ortiz Tuned. There's so many different options that you can use. Mm -hmm. I just find my little niche with Lund. We have good communication. So cars come out great. So who's got the fastest car out here in New York? Like the fastest, I guess, Coyote. Oh, man. Fastest coyote? Yeah. Um, Just so I know. Like, so you know. stick shift, me. Anyone could find out. Anybody could find out. But stick shift wise, oh, coyote. Oh, yeah. Long Island. Oh. Any, <laughs> any stick shift coyote, <laughs> Long Island can get the work. Okay. Automatic. I'll get my shit pushed in. <laughs> Damn. That's um, yeah, I'll get my shit pushed in with an automatic. But stick shift wise, <laughs> I'll fuck up any other stick shift car. So whoever wants to fuck around and find out, let me know. Um... <laughs> Automatic wise, you know, you got Thug, you got Problem. I've seen, I've seen, I've seen Man, Thug's car go. You yeah. got, oh God. The that fastest. car is fast, though. Thug's car is fast. Dude, there's some cars out east too that are fast. Not as much dig cars, but yeah. they, they fly too. They're going eights. Anybody um, going to the track, though, that you know from out here? That's there's, I know a lot of guys work? that go to the track around here, but they keep their numbers disclosed. And, you know, oh, I don't okay. want to tell their numbers or anything, right, right, but right. they're going fast. They're going real fast. Okay. It's hard to really pinpoint who is the fastest because, like, you know, oh, actually, and you have Rod, 718. That car's fast. Normally it's with the so BMW bad. guys, everybody knows their times. Like, everyone talks about it. It's pretty open. So, like, with the American people, I'm not really sure. Like, They kind of more you know? grudge-oriented, yeah. you know what I mean? Um, on the track, yeah, they don't really disclose any track times, you know? That's I don't, I'm trying to think of who on Long Island would have, or even New York, one of the fastest ones around that I know of. I'd have to say Thug, Problem. The guys who are just outside. Yeah, basically. outside. Honestly, yeah. Yeah. Um, any any other... Well, that's just for... You mean for coyotes? Yeah, coyotes. Oh, uh, okay, okay, okay. You yeah. know anybody who's just like a American car, period? Like fastest? Like it could be a, a vet or something like that, too. Oh, there's so many, dude. You got slowly Hellcat. That car is flying. Hellcat. Oh, yeah. Twin turbo Hellcat built by Ripatuned. Gangsta oh, I'm car. interviewing him tomorrow. Oh, dude, dope ass yeah. car, dope ass car. I mean, this it's it's so hard to really pinpoint who's got the craziest shit because it's like there's so many people that have crazy shit. You know, it's wild. Even the modern muscle too. It's like there's yeah. so many gangster cars. You got the C7Zs, you know, that are moving. The C6ZR1s that are flying. You know, yeah. so it's it's hard, man. It's really hard to pinpoint who's the, the real fastest. Well, I mean, in terms of times, though, you don't like, obviously you said they don't really disclose their times, but have you heard of any times that are like? Oh, yeah, there's some Mustangs along Island going 850s, easy. 850s? Easy. Easy 850s. At the track? Oh, 100%. I mean, okay. yeah. Damn, 850s? No, they're yeah. flying. That's not bad. That's not bad. So I can see, I can see what the hype is about the BMWs going like, you know, 8s and, and high Yeah, flights. no, that's, that's insane. I'm going to be honest. Like, <laughs> these cars make great power, but, yeah. I mean, look at the G80s going 8s on the street. I mean, they're just pulling up, stopping, and hitting an 8. 890 880 on the street i mean that's ridiculous dude yeah you'll i'll never do that on the street you know never oh hell no not stick shift probably at least because they'll drive as well and, and exactly oil, right that's a good combination that's it is an a easy good combination. combination but then it takes a driver out of the car i would assume you know because you're driving you're driving manual so yeah. you gotta drive your car yeah yeah you know what it's, i'm saying yeah it's way different ball game you know right right so you really can't compare the two in that sense because it's like kind of like it's kind of like a cheat code a little bit, honestly. It is. It is. Dude, man, I had a Volkswagen Golf R, man, and that thing was a little cheat code, a little automatic DCT. Yeah. So I got respect for them. It's just, like you said, it takes the fun out of it. You right. know, it's like when you're when you're rowing down the street of a thousand wheel horsepower stick shift Mustang or anything stick shift making a thousand wheel, yeah. it's rowdy every single time. <laughs> and it's different every single time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Every single time is different. Shit. And that's the fun part, man. So um, we didn't really go over the specifics of the LS uh, versus the Coyote. Yep. So can we talk more about that? So some so, key differences with LS to Coyote. Um, Coyote has a small displacement, depending, because um, you have the 48 and the 5.3 um, LS-based platform. Yeah. Again, not well-versed in the LS. It's not my cup of tea, so if I'm wrong, correct me. Um, but right off the gate, the heads on Coyote's outflow uh, LS heads, I mean, it's unmatched. No right. one can argue that. Is that because uh, they're, they're dual overhead cams? Dual overhead cam, VCT. Um, it works wonders, man. It absolutely okay. works wonders. Um, the short blocks are great, or the bottom end is great mm -hmm. for a five liter. Makes good power, holds good boost. Um, 
you don't really got to mess with as much shit on a coyote okay. as like an LS. An LS, when you really want to make some power, you got to throw heads on it. You got to throw cams in it or a cam in it. You got to do valve springs, retainers, lifters. You got to do everything to make some power with those. Compared to these, I'll throw oil pump gears in them on my stock cams, my stock everything, and gap them. You know what I mean? <laughs> or make a thousand wheel, whichever one. But what's cheaper? <sighs> It's, it's hard because you can find an LS junkyard, keep it literally bone stock motor, make seven, 800 wheel and beat the shit out of it. Sometimes they blow up, sometimes they don't. So it's hard. Real, realistically, yeah. realistically, like I'm a big coyote guy, but you know, it's, it's a little cheaper going LS. Once you start doing built motor stuff, it yeah. kind of equates out to where it's right. like, all right, they're both expensive. But you know, we could go to a junkyard right now, get a five, three out of a van, you know, like and throw a turbo kit on it and go have fun. You're not mm. buying one of these for $800. You know, these things are expensive. Yeah, definitely look expensive for sure. Yeah, they Shit are. It looks like it's got a lot the of The heads are expensive. <laughs> it's just, yeah, you heard heads on these cars, you're upset. You're having a bad day. You can rev higher in this because of the cams though, right? Oh yeah, we'll rev these out bone stock with a tune to 8,000 RPM. Manifold dependent, as in what manifolds can actually make the power at high RPM. Mm. But yeah, like my turbo car, I spin this to 8,500, you know? 8,500? Yeah, hell yeah. The Voodoos, the 5.2 flat plane cranks, I'll send those stock motor to 8,250. Dude, that's crazy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they love the up top. They love it. 82. You get those in like a like a S2000. Re yeah. I was revving out to 80. The same yeah, thing. It's nuts. It's nuts. And it's crazy, too, because you get the trucks, right? So that's what the F-150s. And the RPM goes to 7,000 RPM on the dash. Yeah. So it's weird. It'll just pin 7,000 RPM and just keep it pushing, you know, or just stand there and you just hear the car revving up. You're like, yo, and then it shifts, you know. What? Oh, it's cool. It's real cool. What's done to your car specifically, like this, this setup? So this is a built motor setup. Um, built motor, built trans, built rear. It's built front to back. Rod piston set up, stock sleeves, um, 87, 82 turbo, ID 1300s, four triple pump. You know, the basic, the basic Coyote setup. That turbo is pretty, pretty big, bro. It's not bad. It's, it's honestly, I kind of missized it when I, when I did this setup. Yeah. It's not, it's a T4 with like a 112 AR housing, 87, 82. It's hold on, hold on. All right. So, <laughs> hold on. All right. So, we got to break that down a little bit yep, because yep, yep. I know I had some turbo talk with you last time. Yep. Right. So on my S2000, I went with a 0.991, I think it was. I had a S366. Okay. So the T4, it was T4 housing on the mm -hmm. outside. Um, now I went with that because I didn't want to go too big because then obviously turbo, turbo lag. Correct. Right? So what's the ideal setup for or ideal turbo for your for your car so for this setup this is an 8782 um i wouldn't recommend an 8782 these kits the on three kits a single turbo setup at least is like a 76 75 t4.96 ar housing if you're looking to make under a thousand and you see yourself never making over a thousand wheel do a 76 75 t4.96 ar housing they work great they light up great um they make peak power well um if you see yourself going more than that and you want to make a thousand plus i would do a t6 flange um t6 yeah t6 immediately because back pressure with these cars yeah damn. um the base kits come with like an 8096 and then some guys do like upgrades 88 86, 88 96 some guys do like a what is that 89 103 mm -hmm. you know they do huge turbos right um but you could get away with the 76 75 or 80 96 and those work magic they work real good so for those people who don't understand the numbers, yep. can you kind of explain that for the yeah, housing? Yeah, well, to be honest, I or always inducer, get myself confused. Inducer, somebody. exducer situation? Like yeah, that. you have your inducer, which is your first number, exducer, second number, and then right. your AR housing is how big the actual um, flange on the back side is. Right, the hot um, side. Pretty much what that is, is that's your back housing as in um, the larger the more power you can produce as in it expels more exhaust gas. Right. So it helps with less back pressure. With that, you'll lose a little bit of spool. Um, it's not going to be too drastic, but if you oversize the hour housing, you could definitely, you know, won't be able to spool the car. So you have right. to find that happy medium. Right. I like to set, recommend for the single turbo guys, 112 or a 132, depending how big or how bad you really want to go with that setup. Right. That's kind of, uh, what, a hot side you're talking about? Oh, yeah, hot side. Oh, they big boys, bro. They one, flow three, big. Two? Yeah, I just put one on a Gen 3 car, single turbo. It was a 7875 with a 112 AR housing, you one, know, one, and they two. want me to go bigger. Lund wants me to go bigger. So it's also, it's also four more cylinders than what I was. 
Yeah, know? they make a lot of back pressure. Like compared right. to like if we put it, we can't put an S three hundred line turbo on this car. How long? That's it's tiny. Maybe if we do twins, you know what I mean. But even then, it it's looked like, big in the car. Yeah. But nah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. In this like that that looks like crazy. Yeah. You need some pretty decent sized turbos um, with the twins. You know, most guys, we really like to run the 64, 66s or the 64, 62s. Very popular turbo. Yeah, yeah, those are, they make great power. You'll make right. 1,400, 1,500, and they spool great. That's usually what I like to recommend. Or you do the 60, On this? 62s. On the couch? Yeah, yeah, hell yeah, absolutely. 64, okay, damn. Yeah, you know, any real twin turbo setup, Gen 1 to 3, the 64, 66s, if you want to make some power is what I usually recommend. Um, you could do, we just put 67, 66s on a yeah. sleeved built motor Gen 1. You know, he's going to make some big power. but. Damn. So yeah, I, I think I noticed a lot of people when, when it comes to the BMW stuff, they really don't know anything about turbos. And I've noticed that over the over the past three years since I've had the Supra, you ask somebody what turbo they have, they tell you what turbo they have, but they don't really know why they have that turbo. They don't yep. know anything about hot side, back mm -hmm. housing, T4, T, they don't know anything about that. Um, and I think it has to do with just like, you know, following the rest of the culture saying, oh, well, I have a downpipe in tune. This is what turbo I have. Yep. I have a hybrid turbo, which is cool. But when you have to build something like, let's say like a J, like not JDM, like a, um, Honda, you basically have to do it yourself because yeah. those cars don't come like that. You yeah. Know? So um, I had nothing. I had no choice. I had to go on the forums, do research, li literally go on like tuning forums and stuff like that and figure out all this stuff about the turbo stuff. Find out the hard um, way. The hot, the hot side and, and things like that and how it affected your spool times um, and so on. So for me, um, I had a twin scroll set up on mine. Yep. So are you, are you twin scrolling this as well? Or? Um. It, the, no, this one's uh, an open. Open? Yeah. Does it, is there any big difference when it comes to having a twin scroll on this because of how it's, it's single turbo, right? Yes. Yeah, single turbo. So like, does it make any difference? Because usually it's like a divided housing. So um, does it make a difference if the air is just like flowing into the same? For these, we usually recommend just as least amount of restriction as possible. There probably is a scientific reason. I'm not quite sure what the divided housing realistically does. I think it helps with spool time. Like right. the Garrett's, they do the divided housing, so it helps with cool, oh, spool time. But yeah. um, I'm not quite sure. With these, you don't really see a difference. It kind of just lights up. Just you lights know? up. Yeah, right? it just lights the fuck up. Yeah, because that's what I asked you last time because it's obviously a V8. Yep. So if it's divided, normally like on the on the manifold, the exhaust manifold, yep. it's, it's going into, it's flowing more efficiently rather yeah. than just cramming air into just. Yeah, on know. the Hondas at least, like when you do divided, you'll have two runners that come into the flange, yes. you know? On the Coyotes, you kind of have the turbo header and then it comes forward and then you have a crossover mm. and then it meets. So it's not, it doesn't play too much of an effect on it. Right, right, it's just. We just power. slap a turbo on, it just makes some <laughs> power, makes you know? Power. Hell yeah. So what are some of the uh, things that like prevent you from making power on this or some things that you should probably, like you said, oil pump gears are one of them. Yeah. Now, if you're, if you're going over a thousand, is there anything that else that you feel like, yes. you know what I'm saying? Um, you should definitely change. So like a basic for all the guys that want to do a built motor setup, keep it simple. Do a built short block, um, a rod piston short block, ARP okay. main studs, ARP head studs, um, some nice comedic MLS head gaskets, uh, 0 0.040 or 40, whatever it is. Um, do valve springs, retainers, and dude, don't touch the heads. You could pour them, whatever you want, but... Does that make a difference? Because the heads flow well, right? Yeah, they're decent. The Gen 1s and Gen 2s flow good. Um, Gen 2 flows a little better. Some guys like to do the Gen 2 heads. The intake cams are a little better as well. So Is that like the 3 two, one you were talking exactly. about? Exactly. <laughs> when you really, you know, can you could play with them a little bit. Like some guys, put it like this, a stock GT350 head, the Voodoo head. Okay. Flows more stock than a ported Gen 1 or Gen 2 head. Stock, it flows better. So if you were to make a gangsta ass motor, you would do like a a sleeve 5.2 Predator with GT350 heads or even GT500 heads because they flow so much mm. more, you know? Interesting. Yep. Yeah, so the, G, the GT350 has a 5.2, right? Correct. 5.2 5 5 Voodoo. 2. Flat pane. naturally aspirated. Correct. Wait, wait, what year is that? What year is that? Those, start? the, what are they, 15 to 17 or are they 17 plus? Um, the 350s, I think, were 15 to... It's not 2011. It was later than that. No, yeah, yeah. They were later. S550s they came out with. I don't remember if it was the 15 or the 17s when they started rolling them in. They have Gen 1s and 2s of the 350s. Okay. Because I always thought that the GT, like those, the GT350 and the 500, yep. I thought it was just like a, a Coyote, but just like maybe some, I don't know, some type of different setup. Still or modular, like still work together. Just the bottom end, we don't, you know, kind of stray away from that. It's kind the of, heads are interchangeable. Yeah, we want those heads. The GT350 heads, you want to go real fast, those are the heads you want. So is there any benefits to having the bottom end on those cars? Mm, not really. Most because cars just do a built bottom end. You know, just whichever one you want, Gen 1, Gen 2, Gen 3. 
you know. But the three, the five hundred is 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 uh is boosted or supercharged. Sorry. Yeah, the five hundred is the five two predator. That's right. twenty twenty plus. Um, that's, that's yeah, those are supercharged. Car, right? Those are nine five to one. Yeah, compression. Okay, nine five to one. So mm-hmm. wouldn't those internals probably be better? Like since they're since it's boosted. Well, they definitely are better. I mean, there's guys that make like thirteen hundred wheel on those stock motors. Like, stock motor thirteen hundred. Yeah, hell yeah. I mean, will it blow up one day? Absolutely. But there's guys that do it. You know, like Damn. you do even on the stock supercharger. They either throw a Whipple on it or a stock ported blower. They'll make nine fifty wheel on a stock motor, a thousand wheel, no problem, easily. That is impressive. There's a, that car's so expensive. many guys making a thousand eleven hundred wheel on a GT five hundred Predator. Oh yeah. What are those cars going for? <clears throat> Where's Yuri at? Um, <laughs> they're like a hundred k, one hundred twenty k somewhere around there. One hundred and twenty k. They're they're expensive, man. Damn. I think you get them cheaper now. I know some guys. Actually, let me retract that statement. I think they're like eighty. I'd say eighty to one hundred k, depending on what setup you get. Depending on what, like, if you're buying one new or you're buying one modded. It all depends I want, on the I want the one Yuri got. I'll put it up on the screen for you guys. Jesus. And I will. <laughs> the, I want the one Yuri got. What is it? Like a S550 chassis or something like that? Oh, uh, that's, dude, that's the GT500 gangster one. Um, it is S550, yes. Yeah. But yeah, GT500 itself. Yeah, that one, honestly, bro, he's. T- <laughs> I don't even know what he would get for that car. 100, 120K. It's a very different car. It's a twin turbo setup. You don't see, that's honestly what, one or two of them in Long Island or New York, you know? Yeah, so it's like it's like yours, wrong. but just a, a GT different different motor. Yeah, GT five hundred. Yep. So he kept everything pretty much. Well, yeah, he's got a different motor in it now because he blew it up. Fucking uh. guy. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was a Predator in it. Now it's got something else in it. But you know, so al- along, along the same lines. Yeah, along the same lines. Damn. See, that's more my speed. That car looks dope. The it GT500. looks amazing. Yeah. The front I, end is gnarly. Front end. Gnarly. Um, you know what I saw the other day? I saw um a dark horse. Oh yeah. I, Sweet. Yeah, uh, what's his name? Uh, Calvin ended up wrapping one. He did like. Oh a, yeah. So I took pictures of it. And Very it was nice. Fire. Yo, the the Very interior, nice. like the the cluster, dude. It's like a whole screen. Oh yeah, it's sweet. It looks like a G80 fucking screen. Yeah. So just a huge. Yeah, it's nice. It was fire, like, and you can see the car. Like yep. it has like animations. It's yeah, like it's, it's like super futuristic. It's nice, but it's expensive. It's yeah. Like seventy or eighty k for that car. I could never for a naturally aspirated car. I'm a Mustang guy. I could never. Maybe one day. But what motor? You know what motor's in that? That is a that is the S650 line. So, okay. And then it's just the Gen 4 Coyote. Oh, Gen 4 Coyote. Yeah, it has dual throttle bodies, not one. So talk about that. I didn't even know I didn't even know we were at Gen 4, dude. Yeah, so we're at Gen 4, 2024s. They okay. came out, the S650s. It's another 5.0. Um, it's got dual throttle bodies, which is different. But dual cool. throttle bodies. Yeah, dual throttle bodies. So instead of one, it has literally two throttle bodies that come out with two intakes. What you you you? What's the benefit to that? Like, Ford saw something where they thought it was cool and worked, so that's what hmm. they were doing. Interesting. We all were kind of taken back too. We're like, what the fuck is going on? You know. Yeah. Okay. So, most guys like when you do a Whipple, it goes back to one throttle body. Like they put already Whipples on these. Right. They have pro chargers, which is cool. They have like a double intake where they keep the two throttle bodies, and they have like a carbon intake that comes in. Oh, mm. it's sick. Oh, it's so cool. I like it. It looks great, like a twin turbo setup, because you got two identical charge pipes that go right, in, you know. Right. So that's cool. But you know, I don't know. I don't know how I feel yet. Is there any? <laughs> they're, they're, you can't tune them yet. That's the only problem right now. So they're locked. Yeah, you can't tune them at the moment. They'll um, find a way. Lung's gonna find a way. Absolutely. So, like any other platform, or let's say like the BMW. Yep. Uh, when 2020 came out, I think it was it's, it was locked. 2021s are locked. 22s. The same thing with the with the uh, the American cars. Yeah. Um, so you have to have somebody figure it out and then correct, correct, and then it gets passed. Who on usually? The who, so who's the Visconti of American cars, or who's the Visconti of Coyotes? Who's the best? Lund. So Lund is Lund like Racing the, is the best. So he's he's going to be the one to figure out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yep. The unlocking. Thing. Yeah, John Lund Jr., John Lund Sr., um, you know Dakota, Alex, all those guys. So John Nardi, uh, great team. They'll figure it out, and once they do, you know they'll prove their point. It's like pretty. It's pretty interesting though because it's like it's an American. It's a domestic based platform, yep. and you're, it's still locked. So it's yeah. like how hard is it to unlock it because you're already in America? Yeah, that's what we were wondering too. We're like, hey, why isn't it out yet? You know, but there's got to be something. They put something in that's throwing somebody for a loop. But so, I, I couldn't even tell you why or what limits it. Yeah, couldn't even tell you. They just one day they'll be like, hey, tuning is uh, available. Sign me up. You know. That's it. They'll make an announcement. Damn. So we're just waiting for that day. Yeah. 
Do you but, have any any Gen fours that you've worked on, or even? No, I haven't worked at? on any Gen fours yet. Um, I've seen a few in person. Yeah, they're pretty cool. Definitely looking forward to pushing that platform. But it's not really much that's changed. Like all of the S five fifty like suspension. Yeah, bolts right onto an S six fifty. Literally okay. same shit. Okay. Um, there's a few differences, but not too many. Just besides the twin throttle body. You so, know. So, with the Gen three, the oil pump gears is still issue. Not as much, but we recommend it always. We always recommend oil pump so gears. So do you think that could be fixed in the Gen 4, possibly? Uh, like you think if you wanted to make some power, you don't have to worry about that now? Uh, I forgot if the Gen 4 Coyotes are belt-driven. I know the, the truck ones are. I forgot if those have the oil pump gears. The new F-150 trucks, mm -hmm. um, the Gen 4 motors, they have a belt-driven oil pump. So you don't have to do oil pump gears. They, people push them to like 1,200 wheel. I forgot. I actually didn't even check up on that. If it is oil pumps, oil pump gears on a Gen 4. That's 650. It's still very new, so I'm... I'm yeah, sure yeah, I haven't yeah. even messed with it that much to right. even give a, a, a knowledgeable response yet. Right, which right. I should probably touch up on, but... Well, I mean, when you get the car, it's probably better first hand rather than reading online exactly. sometimes because you, you, you don't... You have hands-on, yeah, so I'm messing with things. On. I'm plugging shit, you know? Like, yeah, I, I, I find myself getting lost when I start looking up shit because I start doing research and it's like so easy to find some YouTuber who's talking about the platform. Yeah. And then it's like, there's always that little bit of information where they skip over because they don't really know too much about it. Yep. So, so for example, like the turbo, you can start talking, you can start talking about what size turbo to get. But then when I start asking you like, oh, what, well, how, when is this pool? Like what hot side are you running? It's like, uh, I don't know. I, he told me to get this one. Yep. <laughs> Literally. So that's, that's how it too goes. Too many variables. So um, that's why it's kind of like, it's, it's, it sucks when you're looking up stuff um, sometimes, yep. especially from YouTubers who don't really have hands on the car yeah you know or they got money to put into the car exactly but they're not the ones who are actually doing the research you exactly know? Just paying somebody to put the stuff on the car and tell them what and that's do. when you get lost in the sauce you know right. lost in the communication of just like down the grapevine like oh you should do this and it's like no you shouldn't do yeah. you know it's right you know how it goes how the community is with shops in the american american car uh, scene good honestly i mean everyone's pretty cool around here there's some great shops on long island um jtm Mustang got, Magic is close too, right? Yeah, Mustang Magic on the block. You my know, dad used to go there. Actually, you know, it's funny. My guys. dad had a 5.0. Um, uh, what is it called? Fox Body? Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he had one. It had like the, the blue stripe. Yeah. Uh, or two stripes, right? Or is it one? Oh, uh, two stripes. Two stripes, yeah. Um, and he always had it at that fucking yep. shop. Yeah, Mustang Magic is great. You know, Joe and LJ, cool guys. Been there for years. Yeah, they're great guys. You know, they help me out when they can, and I try to help them out when they can. Yeah. You know, they're cool guys, man. They work on some great cars. They've been doing this for so long, you know. I think it's like 25 years. That's crazy. And then yeah. you still got, you know, you got Got Boost, great shop. You got um, JTM. There's so many shops in Long Island. You got Tracks out in the Bronx, I think. Tracks Auto Works. Um, I, think, I think it sounds familiar. Yeah, they're out in the Bronx, I think. They do a lot of Coyote stuff. Um... Who else? Who does a lot of LS stuff? I, for, I forget, but those are the basic are the shops that, that I know. Yeah, those guys go are good. To. They produce some very fast cars. So, what about in the, in the country though? Like, let's say you know how like um, like you know how Midnight is known for like building yep. fast cars, trucks, or maybe trucks. <laughs> I should say, uh, is that like the top shop you would want to go to, or is it just, is it more of just like one of those things where it's like uh, you would go there because of the hype? So, as a shop owner, I can. I can say that Midnight right now is yeah. probably the top dog. Of course, um, yeah. Crazy builds. I'd say Brett LaSala with Real Street. Oh, um, I watched his, yes. uh, his, um, he's, his builds. Yeah, yeah he's, he's awesome. He's one of the... I look up to him as in because he pushes the platform so far yeah. and what he's doing and the knowledge and the experience and the in-depthness that he gets with these cars and figures out and puts sensors, you know, he really pushes these cars to find out what the limits are and keeps expanding. You know, I mean, look at that program they have of Real Street. Yeah. They're known for 2Js. Now look what they're doing with the Coyotes. They're right. going, what did Brett go? 630 at 225 at World Cup on a, on a 5'2 Predator stock sleeve short block. That ain't no billet block. That ain't no bullshit. He went 630 at 225 really? on a cast OEM block. Cast OEM block. So the, the blocks on the Coyotes are open deck? Yes. Okay. So that's... Coolant passages, all that. So what we do is we do cylinder support in a sense. We sleeve them out so that it can handle the pressure inside the cylinders. Mm. So, yeah, Brett, I mean, is pushing That's the platform. Crazy. Yeah, they did an FFRE short block, which I think is the best engine program around besides RPG and TKM. But back rolling into that um, of the shops, it's it's definitely Real Street um, with Brett LaSala. Yeah. Midnight Performance. I mean, man, look at what they're doing with Lund. I mean, they hold damn near every record there is for Coyotes. Um, you got Certified Performance out in the West. I mean, there's so many 
good shops in the United States when it comes to coyote specific wise, at least, mm -hmm. um, you know, even with the Mopar stuff or going into the modern muscle stuff, you got rip attuned, you got team Hellcat, you got, there's so many, yeah, yeah, there's so many, but for right now, for me, it's midnight real street. Um, those guys are killing it, bro. Absolutely killing it. Yeah. I enjoy so watching, them. um, them do like motor builds and stuff. Yeah. It's hell yeah. With the engine building. I feel like midnight. Well, it's not, I feel like it is true. Midnight's more of that down and dirty shit. Talk, make it happen. Fast cars, fast shit. And more real streets, more informative track orientated, right. less street stuff. Very let's go fast, drag and drive, push the platform. Right. Right. Not right, like right. midnight isn't, but you know, yeah. Now, you Midnight, I mean. Midnight is known for having those really fast trucks. Oh, hell yeah. He was doing a lot of the Mustang works at first and then started transitioning into the F-150s. And, I mean, look what he's doing with the F-150s. I mean, it's, it's what do you, what, so what do, you, what do you think he's doing? What's your, like, you know, how you, how you always try to, like, figure out or have an idea in your head of what somebody else is running? What do you think that this guy's running to, to, like, make his cars go that fast? So I say it like this. Everyone's got the same recipe. Everyone's got a different sauce, though. Mm. He's got a different sauce. He's got it's the, the sauce, same though. recipe that everybody can do. He just adds their flair. Same with other shops. He mm. knows he's done so many setups where it's like, he knows everything. Yeah. He knows, hey, I want to make, hey, yo, kid, uh, you want to make 1,300 wheel? Do this. Done. You want to make 1,800 wheel? Boom. Do this. Yeah. You want to make 500? Do that. He just knows. He's done it. He has the experience and he's proven. He's got the numbers. He's got the times. It's like, dude, you know, how can you beat it? Yeah, it's really, it's really dope, though. It's all the sauce, you know. Like, he just yeah. has it, you know. And then there's things that they don't show, you know, like, is the truck gutted? Is it not gutted? The world may never know, you know? I mean, that's really, that's really never anybody's business anyways. Exactly. You know? That's part of like, you know, that's part of like the hustle. That's how it honestly. goes. Yeah. That's how it goes. You have no idea. Yeah. You know, and they do it cool, man. They got a tone A cover on it, murdered mm -hmm. out windows. You can't see nothing. Yeah. You know, but if you know, you know. But it's the same motor that you would get in this. Yeah, it's nothing it's simple. Like shit. the motors that he has, Midnight has, Real Street, like the motor Brett LaSala has, mm -hmm. you can buy that from FFRE. Like Damn. fast forward racing engines. I could call them right now. They have sleeve short blocks in stock. I think it's like 11, 12 grand unless their prices went up. Ready to ship, you know? And that's wow. 1,800 wheel horsepower capable, no problem. You know, in stock, ready to go. No bullshit. Tried and true. So again, it's the same recipe. It's just when you get the motor and you put it in, different sauce, you know? What if I put a, what if I put like a Coyote in like a, a Supra? <laughs> I mean, you could, but you might get a lot of hate, dude. You might get a lot of hate. Why would I get hate though? You're I don't know this, because it can make Supra. so much power. I know, but it's well. Number one, I don't even know if it would fit because these motors are so big. The heads are oh, so big. Right. I don't even know if it would fit. So you know? is that why LSs are more interchangeable? You can, you can swap LSs out. are way smaller. Okay. Um, width wise, because mm. the Coyote heads are just massive. Right. Like it doesn't look that big. Well, nah, it, does. it does. It does. It looks like two. It looks like literally like a. Like a 2J and like a yeah, 2J. Yeah, it's, it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. My buddy has an F body and we were doing measurements and shit. And he was like five inches off. He was like, yeah, this ain't going to happen. I'm yeah, like, ah, damn. Shit. That is a big motor though. It is a big motor. And it's the heads are, I mean, the heads are like this thick, you know? What What would you be able to put that in there? <laughs> Whatever fits. I think it'd be, I don't you know? know. I think it'd be dope to put I like, think it would be awesome. It's just, if you got that will, there's a way, you know? Maybe it'd have to sit a little bit higher. Nah, I don't know. It's you know what it is. It's the header clearance. That's the problem. Like when you mm. do fox body or a fox body with the coyote header swap, you have to get coyote fox body headers because they're so tightly clearanced. Oh, dude, you have a lot of space in there though. Yo, oh, yeah. Well, I opened up. I deleted a lot of shit. It, it doesn't look like that from factory. I deleted everything. All the lines, ABS, coolant overflows. I tucked the ECU and did a whole wire tuck. That just you know not gonna front. I'm I'm gonna have to do some video or something like on my phone or something so you guys can see the setup. It's pretty fire. It's, it's pretty decent. fire. It's you just gotta watch. Works. You just gotta watch your your legs because he's got like some uh, some piping. Oh yeah, he's yeah, got yeah. Some, <laughs> Oh yeah. Some tubing going on over there, but um, nah, it's definitely a fire fire ass setup. So you had a um, you had a run with this recently. Yes, I raced one stock. Uh, the the vet, the vet, the vet. and I got gapped. You got gapped. Yeah. Well, I broke, but you know, I lost. <laughs> I'm so. acting like I didn't see it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Like you weren't there. Yeah. No, I got gapped. Uh, hurt second gear, but it is what it is. We'll be back and better than ever sooner or later. So you have that, you have that cleared up? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to do a whole different trans setup in the car, do a T56 Magnum, but do yeah. You think you would have won? Oh man, that's such a tough topic. I'm going to be honest, bro. Realistically, man to man, I don't think so. That car was hauling up top. My car does back half very well, but you know. I could admit when I was outgunned, and I think I was outgunned right there. Even if you guys, you caught the light print. What? 
if you would have I had that time? sauced up. I had it like 17 pounds in in fourth gear on that on that race. Yeah. So that made 1033 um on my car. This made 1033 oh, on 17 you, you pounds. Oh, racing with 1000 on the street. Yeah, up top. I was only throwing it in fourth boost by gear. So once I threw That's fourth, it was kind of just, you know, so let it ride sick. type shit. But it, it would have, I don't even know what would have happened, man. I, I would love to say it was going to be fucking neck and neck, but that car's flying. Those autos, those A8s, man, fucking fly. Thousand on the street, though, bro. That's wild. Oh, yeah. If you look here, at, yeah. we'll post up a clip of my car doing a 480, 60 to 130 on the street stick shift. And it's, that was 17 pounds and 18 pounds in fourth gear. And it's pin straight. Pin straight. And that's rolling into it. It did a 48, 60 to 130 stick shift rolling into it. No anti lag, no spooling, yeah. just rolling into it. And that's your fastest 60 to 130? Uh, four five, fastest 60 to 130. The stick? Stick shift, yeah. Stick shift. That's pretty impressive. Yeah, not bad. I know it could take more. Um, it's just that's I'm limited on trans gearing. So yeah. Once we get a different trans in it, I'm going to fucking send this thing. <laughs> oh, dude, what? <laughs> just wait. Okay. $10,000 LS or Coyote. Okay. No labor included. Okay, beautiful. Um, I'd stick with the Coyote still. Really, if you're doing it yourself, let's do a let's use a Gen Three as a, as an example. Ten Gs by yourself. ESS supercharger kit, sixty five hundred bucks. Okay. You can do a budget fuel system, like a Sile kit or a Lethal Performance kit, which is like twelve hundred to two grand. So you're at eight grand, and you need injectors and a tune. That'll put you at eight hundred wheel. 10k if you do it by yourself which you can easily do you can put an ess kit on by yourself it's the easiest kit you can do injectors you can't fuck up fuel system you could fuck up but it, it, you watch a youtube video you know it's it's simple man you could you could probably fuck up an injector though if you don't put the, like the yeah you gotta, right? you gotta, gotta lube, lube them up a little bit lube it up, but, <laughs> you know that's yeah. it but yeah no 10k i mean that's it injectors fuel system tune and um, a power adder of your choice. I just say ESS kit because you can get it from like 5,500 to 6,500. That puts you right at 10, 11K. And you're making 800 wheel on a stock motor, stock trans, ready to go. Okay. LS. I'm not quite sure what you can get with 10K, but all I know is it's junk. LS is absolutely <laughs> junk. Coyote <laughs> till we die. Um, that's just my personal opinion. <laughs> I didn't think you were going to go there with that one. I have to. Damn, you guys always like, the guests always like catch me off guard. I'm like, oh, damn, all right. I guess we're going now. It just, that. you know what it is, man? I got so many LS guys and we just back and forth. One of my, one of my good buddies, Steven, um, fuck that guy. He's got an F body. <laughs> and, um, you know, that car is fast, man. But I don't know. I'll still take this thing any day of the week. Yeah. Coyote till I die, man. I honestly, I honestly, if I had a Mustang, I would definitely... Definitely go crazy with it, like like how you have it set yep. up. What what would this cost? Oh good lord, I I I went full <laughs> retard. <laughs> I went full <laughs> retard. Like <laughs> I did things I didn't even need to do. I just wanted to do it just yeah. to learn and mess around with it and say I could do it and find the right way to do it and the wrong way to do it. Um, I spent way too much money on this setup. On what the I've been like third turbo setup, you know. Okay, well um, let's just say as is. Let's say if you were this is your first time building it. What do you think it would I cost? built the motor myself, so I put about 3500 into the motor. Parts. Okay, that's not bad. No, no, parts, you know, yeah. labor is where it gets bad. So 3500 in parts, modular head shop stuff. Um, turbo kit was four grand. So, and then injectors were about 1500 Fuel system of the 35. I'd say like realistically 20K. It's way more than that, but you know. I'm like 30, 40K into this car. I built trans, built rear, clutches I've been through, fucking, I'm on my like seventh transmission. Oh, yeah. So if we but tally 20, up. But if you tally it up from the first time building it without the replacements. Yeah, you're 20K. At, I can, dude, 15, really 20K, big. you'll make a thousand wheel, 100%. Yeah, I'd say around there. So how much is the body of the car? I bought this car for like 29,000 back in the day. So what is it going for now? Cheap. You can get these like 12 to 18K, depending. All right. Okay. So not bad. They're, they're relatively nah, cheap that's, platforms. That's, that's cheap. Yeah, the Gen 1s are, I call them the modern day Fox bodies. Yeah. Because still solid axle, you know, get down and dirty with it. Uh, upgraded axles? Uh, it's, a, it's a solid diff. Um, so it's a spool with 35 spline axles, um, C-clip eliminator, strange kit. So yes, yes, upgraded axles. Damn. Okay, so maybe, maybe. Uh... <laughs> like, bro, real, put it like this. For anyone yeah. that's coming, like if you guys wanted to come here and get a, 
800 horsepower package. It's going to cost you around 10 to 15K. Labor so saying, and parts. Like maybe maybe it's American not bad. might be the way to go, though. And you're only a built trans away from going real fast. Yeah, but even a built transmission is not as much as... No, it ain't that bad at all. It ain't that bad at all. I think uh, I got to think... I got to look back at one of my invoices, but I think it's like 20, 25K. Parts, labor for a twin turbo kit, fuel system injectors, built trans. Like, really ain't that bad. And you're going to go real fast. You'll go bottom fours with that, 60 to 130. Bottom fours? Oh, yeah. I mean... So I just finished up two single turbo cars, 10 R80 cars, stock trans, stock motor, nine, 10 pounds of boost, barely leaning into it. They're running five, two, 60 to 130s on nine to 10 pounds. So you give me a built trans, I'll push it to 16 to 18 pounds. You'll go bottom fours, if not threes. Easy, easy money. What's the, uh, how much PSI are you running on your car? Uh, 18. 18, 18 now. I haven't put it on the dyno. I put the third pump in. So I mean, I'm going to set it to like 25 pounds. That'll make like 12, 1300 wheel. So... It. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn. Yeah, we're gonna turn it up. Okay. Turn it up real high. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so I, I think I think actually now that I, I have an idea and understanding of how much it costs to build a yep. Mustang, um, it makes sense. I could see I could see where Stefan was saying that like you know it's probably cheaper to build an American car for sure because BMW shit is expensive. Yeah. Um, and then even the transmission, we're like fighting to even get past seven hundred foot pounds oh, yeah. torque. Mm -hmm. So. You guys are already making that. Chilling, yeah. Oh, you know yeah. I'm saying you don't have to worry about that. And then when you're building a transmission, you're already over a thousand. Over <coughs> a thousand. Exactly. Well, well, you're building a transmission on the 10 R80 is usually around 750, 800 wheel because you're on the, slipping, slipping right. seventh gear. Right. Um, how we prolong that is put 315 gears in it because it keeps you out of seventh gear. You'll do like a 60 to 130 in sixth. You know what I mean? Mm. You'll top out sixth. That'll give you some longevity in the trans, but regardless, you start turning it up to the thousand wheel, it might do a hit or two, but it'll start slipping next pass, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then, you know, you got to either turn it back down and wait, you know, budget yourself for a built trans clutches converter. Do you guys have like a, like a trans tune or something like a, how we have XHP where it puts more pressure on the clutches? Correct, correct. It's all loaded into one tune. So like you get a Lund Racing tune through email, it's just load up the tune. It's an engine transmission tune. Um, you could adjust both. You know, if you don't like the okay. way it shifts, you could say, hey, listen, it's a little, drivability is a little weird. They'll work with you. You know, they'll be like, oh yeah, it is a little weird. Here you go, bang, car right. drives great. Or they'll say, hey, I want the shift points at 8,000. They'll be like, mm. all right. And then they'll be like, eh, I don't really like the way that looks. Let's bump it down to 7,500. Yeah. So it's, it's cool, you know, a lot of adjustability. Damn. Yeah. Okay. All right. So no, I might, they're, I they're cool, man. I, I love these platforms and I'm very biased, you know, so, you know, I respect a lot of different platforms, Mopar, LS. It's just, these things are, they're proven, man. They work so good. They work so good. You know, <laughs> they really do, dude. They love boosts like cocaine to them. You know, they're like, just fucking give me it. You know, <laughs> I could tell cause uh, this guy over here, I, I, I'm not getting in his car. But oh yeah. His car's fast. His car's fast. What, what are you making? Like 1200 yeah. that's bullshit. But he's probably making more than that. Going to sauce it a little bit. <laughs> Once it gets a little warm out, it's going to go real fast. Do you have any pull, do you have any clips of you pulling uh, on the street or anything? You, you got like a few. A, right. You definitely got a few. No, 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 I'm not <laughs> no. <laughs> I got uh, no. <laughs> yeah, too cold, buddy. That his car is this car is dope though. I, yeah, I his car is probably Once one I of the saw his car, cars. like that was, was, I was like, ah, oh, nah, maybe I might have to look into Mustangs now. I mean, dude, look at even like this car. Like, we'll take a closer look at it before, but like even just the wheel setup and lowering springs, these cars look ridiculous. Yeah, but they don't look like his though. Oh, no, don't look like his though. <laughs> they do not, you know, and at the front end. Like three times the amount of my car. I mean, my car is three times the amount. Yeah, literally, it is. That's what I'm saying. It looks, it's, it's dope. Yeah. But I could build a seven nice second too. fucking, I could build a seven second S550. Or a 5.0 yeah. for Yuri's car. You know what I mean? Literally. Seven seconds. Oh, easily. Hell yeah. Easily. <sighs> Shit. I don't know. She's like, nah. Yeah, as usual. As usual. <laughs> uh, I'd, have to, I'd have to agree. I think we should do a Coyote little setup, a little collab action. Only, only, reason, only reason I really like this is because it just looks, it looks nice. It's like, you know what I'm saying? Dude, I fucking love them. They got big ass heads. You know what I mean? Two yeah, fucking knockers. Like, uh, it's it's because it's so new also hell yeah. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and they sound cool too like that high rpm like i need you to post up a clip of brett lasala one doing one of his flyby passes at world cup at like ten thousand rpm that car sounds like an f1 car it is ridiculous that car brett lasala has now was this guy's joel Steele. he's with stick shift the world shout out to them baddest stick shift cars around mm -hmm. um 
that was his chassis. He had a red S197, same car. It was red stick shift. I think he went like 680 stick shift, Coyote. Set the world record on everything. Beat LSs to it, everything. Um, LSs now took it back. I think Rubworm has it or Granis, whoever has it. <laughs> but um, yeah, he took that chassis, bought it from Joel. And I think Joel is doing a, S, a gangster S550 build. Um, really looking forward to that one. But then Brett took that chassis put an FFRE sauce into it, repainted it green, and I mean, dude, they're going 630s. Hopefully they go fives one day. 630s is crazy. On an OEM cast block, no billet motherfucking block. Nothing. No closed deck bullshit. You know what I mean? I could still drive. We could take that motor that Brett has and go wait, fucking drive. Wait, what do you mean no closed deck bullshit? You know what I mean? You know What's how, like, wrong with a closed guys, deck? Well, you know what it is? It's race car. Like You guys got to do your billet block and all B58 that shit. B58 is closed deck. Is it? Yeah. S58 mm. is closed deck also. Mm. 2J is closed deck. RB26 is also closed deck. All these classic motors, 4G63 is closed deck as well. Mm. Learn something new. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know all that. All these iconic motors are, are closed deck. Uh, Some of them are, are open deck. Yeah. But um, yeah, I think that's what makes them. I think Subi's open deck, right? Subi is open deck. Actually, they're semi-open, I feel mm. like. Yeah, because I know they do the closed deck option. Yeah. Subi is semi-open. But that's why I asked you if you have issues of warping when, you, when you're making... Never, man. Power. I mean, even stock head bolts, you know, like I said, we'll make eight, 900 wheel on stock head um, head studs, you know, stock head gaskets. Yeah. They don't really start lifting heads at all until you do like 20, 20-something pounds of boost at them. Is, what's the highest horsepower Coyote? Oh, well, there's... there's. It's hard because it's like pro mods with like MMR, okay. billet, coyotes. Yeah. So like those things are pro mods. They're going fives, right. you know. Um, I think those guys will. But like your average cast aluminum block. Right. Um, Brett LaSalle, I think, is the fastest at the moment. It's 633 or you 630 know how much something. horsepower he's, he's making? I don't remember what that is subtitle like in was. I don't know 2000? if it was 2400 or 2800. Wow. I don't remember. Someone, someone, you know, tell me. I forgot which one that is. But he's in the 2000s. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn. Yeah, he's flying. Oh, my God. He's flying. Yeah, you know, B58, B58 who, bro, B58 who, <laughs> Coyote yeah. to the top. It's too, it's still too new though. I mean, no, I give it, I give it props though to the B58s, man. I mean, they're around for not a long period of time, and look yeah. how fast they're going on the street. It's, it's nothing but props, you know. Me and my impressive. boys talk about it all the time. They're like, you should go race these cars. I'm like, you're out of your fucking mind if so you think you, I'm gonna go race those cars. Hell no. So you wouldn't run a B58 car? Uh, from a roll, yes. From a dig, fuck no. B58, I'll get gapped. TTRS, I'll get gapped. Fucking RS3, I'll get gapped. What about a Super though? Oh, that'd actually be a good little race. I ain't racing Peppa, though. That car's fast, so fuck he's that. The, he's the fastest. I know. He's top he is three the fastest. In the, in the or probably top three in the world, I think. No, I'll race a, I'll race a Supra. Yeah, rear wheel drive Supra. It's semi-closed? Okay. Semi-closed? Okay. Good. Fun fact. Interesting. Semi-closed deck. Semi-closed. I think I said semi-open. Uh, semi-closed. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That's right. So that means it has it has like a like a little bit of a bridge in between. Yeah, the, in a uh, sense, yeah. Right around the, the cylinder walls. Yeah, rigidity. Uh, yeah, because you guys rev out pretty high, which is so fucking Very dope. high. Yeah, oh, so, so, so sick. That, so that sick. to me is fire. Yeah, it's the best. That to me is fire. That's, that's the icing on the cake for these cars. You know, if they didn't have RPM, they wouldn't be that cool. Right. But since we have the dual overhead cam, VCT manipulation, we could send these things high. So. I got to uh, I gotta get in, into one. I, I got to do like a, you know, a ride along. But I don't, y'all honestly, I'll take you for a ride in my car. Whatever I mean, I have a, whatever one is safer. <laughs> this one's Whatever round. I say, so right? I have a 10 I got a single turbo 10 R80 car on there I'll take you for a ride that makes like 800 I'm just finishing up and I'll give you for a ride and this one on a thousand and then you could try Yuri's car out we're gonna dial his car in a little bit because it's a little spicy at the nah moment. I've been hearing too much stuff a lot, lot, lot of behind the scenes talk about oh it's it's going spinning six gear all this crazy shit I'm like nah bro I'm good I don't even want to hear that yeah, this one dead hooks. I don't know about Yuri, though. That shit might be sketchy. This shit dead hooks? Oh, 100%. I got three. I mean, show a clip of those tires. I got three 2550s out back. Oh, yeah, They're like big ones. 13 inches, you yeah, know? Even the front tires are big. What is this, all-wheel drive? Yeah, right? <laughs> Look, dude, you know, my boys make fun of me. Fucking yeah, fuck you guys. Yeah, got an all-wheel drive Mustang over yeah, here. An, the yeah, you got to clip that because fucking Anthony and my boy Steven, they fucking literally have a meme of, you, you watch Cletus? Uh, I watch sometimes. You yeah. ever see his airplane with the giant-ass bubble tires? No, I have not. So we got a new airplane and it has like big ass bubble tires and they'll fucking Photoshop that shit on my car because <laughs> I got 15s with big ass slicks. So they just, oh my God, I can't win, dude. Well, what's, what's with the uh, big front tires though? Um, I did a bias ply and I did 15 inch conversion. Wait, wait, hold on, hold on. Hey, wait, hold on. 
You did a what? Bias ply front tire. So it's not a radial. It's a bias ah, ply. So bias it's a little, ply. It's a little okay. poofier up front. Poofier. Um, I've never heard of that word before. Yeah. Bias ply? Bias ply? Oh, yeah. So there's two different types of tires. You have your radial, mm -hmm. um, which is a harder compound, more street tire friendly. And then you have a bias ply. Bias ply is way softer compound, more for stick, uh, stick shift racing. I have never in my life heard anybody say that word. Yeah, yeah. Bi or, or, yeah, yeah bias ply tires. That's like you look at like the CO7 Hoosiers or the Mickey Thompson stiff walls, or the yeah. Mickey Thompson slicks. Those are bias ply. Mm. You could tell like this. You have a car that has bias plies on all four corners. You push the car and the car like rocks back and forth. You can see the tires flex. On a radio car, you go to push a radio car. There's no give. Like, mm. oh, I wish I had the slicks on all four at the moment because you could so see. So like mad squishy. Yeah, literally. It, it feels like you're <laughs> driving an old Cadillac, bro. You know what I mean? Really? Yeah, hell yeah. So is it a smoother ride? Yeah, it's smoother. I like it. I, I drive I daily on slicks and skinnies What's personally. What's the downside to do that? Uh, don't take turns fast. What about rain? Don't drive in the rain or take turns fast in the rain. Okay. On ramps aren't your friends with skinnies. I'll tell you that right now. Are they loud? No, not at all. No? Not at all. Just when you get on an on-ramp and an off-ramp, you're going fucking 20 miles an hour. You're that dickhead fucking... <laughs> You know, every time. How do you feel about R888s for Mustangs? Fucking hate them. Worst tires? Fucking hate them. How do you feel about Nittos? Love them. NTO 5Rs? Well, Fucking love them. They still make them for, for yeah. you? or oh, yeah. They Absolutely. don't make them for my, for my car. But. I, I like the R888s. They just have horrible tread wear. And if you have right. bad alignments, which a lot of the S550 guys do, they'll throw springs on it and be like, fuck, I'm lowered. But it's like you need fucking camber arms. You need toe arms because these things suffer from fucking camber wear, you know? So you have mm. to get adjustable shit. Nobody does it. Right. So, yeah, you know tread wear the shit out of these things you, know? you gotta get like an angle kit in a sense you do like bmr uh suspension stuff yeah. where you have double adjustable you could suck it in you know go to presets so interesting, interesting. yeah yeah yeah. there's a lot of shit man a there's so there's shit. so much that goes into these cars man it's like we're going a little technical and in depth but it's like sometimes it's a little hard to understand because there's so much information yeah and it's you know i try not to come across as like you know most I ramble Mustang sometimes because it's like you think about yeah. so much shit, you know? It's like so much that goes into it. It happens to every um, every every American car guy I speak to. It's just like they just start throwing shit out. Like, ah, I'm like, right, I don't even know. Bro. Yeah, it's tough. You How know? much it make? How much power it make? And okay. then you got to like pull it back because you're right. like, yo, yeah. you know? And honestly, I'm not going to lie. I'm always embarrassed to even ask because I'm like... If I start asking basic ass questions, they're gonna be like, "This fucking guy doesn't know anything." Nah, hell you know no, bro. I don't mind that at all, man. Yeah. I don't so mind I mean, that at all. I don't care. Yep. People will say what they say about it, but yeah, that's, fuck them. Yeah. No, it's not even that. It's just like, when will you ever learn? Then, you know what I'm saying? Exactly. When will you ever learn? You have to ask questions. Most people, I guarantee, if you there's probably people you know, yep. or even customers that come into the shop and they act like they know shit. And you're still, you're talking to them. They don't even they don't even want to ask you what that means. That yeah, that's the big problem. It probably happens a lot. A lot. I guarantee it. It does. You just got to be nice, and you know, there's some people that handle it differently. But you know, I try to inform them if they're completely wrong. Right. But you know, if they're a little a little on the money, I'll just you know let yeah. it slide. But I mean, it's good to know. I mean, it's it's yeah. definitely you gotta you gotta step out your comfort zone with that. I feel like most people never really speak about that actually. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people who, especially with the BMWs, like I said before. Yep. Who they they go to these shops that are doing the same thing for everybody else, and they never really learn anything because they don't have to. Yep. I get it, but. You should branch out a little bit more. Learn about cars because you're not going to have that car forever. You might have something something else. Exactly. You know? And it sucks because a lot of the cars come with new technology. Mm -hmm. So that's why I kind of got scared to even bother with my car because it's just like it's not mechanical. It's they're, not like, they're not like uh, do-it-yourself friendly. You right. know what I mean? Like right. you can mess with it, but it's like at what cost? It's right. like you these have are to know so shit. new. There's so many sensors. It's like, yo, what the fuck am I doing? You know? Right. These are a little more friendly, but I know what you're saying. Of You're kind of scared to work on them in a sense right. where it's like – the older cars, it's like they're more user friendly. Hey, I'll fuck with it a little bit, see what happens, you know? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. That's why I want to get uh, a Honda. But yeah. then it's like, I don't know. These men, I mean. You see me in an American car? In Mustang? I could. Yeah. Only, only a GT500. All right, fair enough. You want to sell it? Or a 350. Nah, I don't know. a GT350? Woo! Nah, I can't do no 350. Bro. <laughs> I, need, I, need, I need the 500. I need the 500. Is there a difference in look between the two? Yeah, the way different. You know what you might like, honestly, bro? A Mach 1. The, the Mach 1 guys know what I'm talking about. Um, they have such a sick front end, man. What year is that? That is the newer ones. 2022s, 2023s. Is it better than the 500? Um, no. Gary's but like, damn, I'm about to sell my shit and get you that You like it, bro. <laughs> a lot of guys are throwing the Mach 1 bumpers on. Fire. Yeah? Yeah, I like them a lot. I got to look into that. I never even knew that. But look look, how, So how much are they going for? 
The Mach 1s, they're kind of like a little premium package. I forgot how much they go for. 60K? That's what not are, bad. What do they go for, right? 60K? 70K? Yeah, somewhere around there. 55? And what motor is in them? 5.0. 5.0? Yeah. Coyote? Yep. Okay, so it's not, it's not a 5.2. Like no, 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 no. But no. Correct. Yeah, we went over that. You were uh, you missed class, bud. Yeah. You're late. You're late. Fucking on your phone, <laughs> fucking guy. We went over that, but I know more than you do now. Too late. <laughs> so, <laughs> so with his car, with the GT500, which yep. I don't know if I asked you this already, but like, is there any benefits to keeping that motor in there? Like, would you just go? Why? Why not just go with like a Coyote swap in there? Because those motors stock handle great power. It just sometimes motors let go. You know, um, some motors last at a thousand wheel, and some blow right up immediately. You know, it's just the name of the game. But those motors are stout, man. Real stout. Like if I was a GT500 guy, um, I wouldn't touch that motor unless it blows up. You know, send it 1,000, 1,100 wheel, have fun with it. If it ever blows up, then throw a built motor in it. You could either build that Predator block or you could put a 5.0 in it. You could do whatever you want at that point. It's all modular. So that's pretty much Shit. what your budget um, calls for in a sense. Okay. Yeah, it's super cool, man. Right. Like I could put a Predator <laughs> block in my car. Yuri has a 5.0 block in his car. So that's a GT500, but it's got a TKM sleeved. Is that a Gen 2 short block or Gen 1? Gen. Is it a 5.2? Is it still a Predator? It's a TKM sleeve Predator? Oh, he's got a sleeve. Okay. All right, so. Yeah, that would work completely in that car. It's no difference at all. Right. Um, okay, that's good to know. Yeah, so. It's a Gen 3, though, I think. Yeah, Gen 3 GT500. Fire. So fire. Fire. No, it ain't just black. It's fire, dude. The nah, whole front fire. end looks ridiculous. He, I saw his car black, and then I was like, yo, I'm going to take my wrap off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it's sick, dude. Yeah, it's, it's dope. It's dope. So what's next for you, man? Like, I, I know, obviously, you're just moving to the shop. Yep. Um, but you have more space now, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. give me a little bit of space. Um, for some reason, the other shot felt bigger. Yeah, it, it feels a little bit bigger because the layout of depth. We lose about four feet in the shop, ah, um, okay. front to back, but we gain a little bit width wise, which gotcha. is always great. Some gotcha. girth. So okay. we'll, we'll take it. Pause. 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 <laughs> Pause. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, man, you know, just, just fucking, we're just, we're just, we're just winging it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You're just winging it. Yeah. No, nah, it's funny. Yeah. It's funny that you laugh. Cause like people, yeah. people will say shit like that and they'll keep talking and I'm, and I, she hears it. Yeah. She's, on the she's like, what the she, fuck? I'll be, like, be like, pause. And it'll be, nobody says anything. Yeah. It happened in one Sox episode, actually. He said some wild shit and I said, pause. No, and I heard that. Laughing. Yeah. <laughs> he said, but I said it with a straight face, like pause. Like <laughs> Jesus. But um, and yeah, no, it's 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 a dope looking shop. I I, I kind of want to see what you know what else you're gonna do with it, um, because it's already kind of clean as it is. Yeah, so. we're gonna be doing epoxy floors, finishing up painting the walls. I got two new lifts coming in tomorrow, so I'm gonna be setting oh, those shit. up. Um, okay. yeah, some new hardware. Um, I mean, my goal for this year, man, is just to learn more, get better, um, you know, educate as much as possible, have fun doing it, and help as many people out as possible, man. Right. Um, that's what I look forward to is. My customer service and satisf satisfaction you know everyone can build cars yeah. but you know i try to get on a level and understand and give good prices and and feel the customer because we were all there you know what i mean yeah, we all yeah. didn't have the money had to figure it out so you know my main goal is to just fucking blow up so i'll hurt no but no so um <laughs> no nah, i just want to be just want to do good this year help everybody out have a yeah. good time doing it. That's one of the reasons why, well, the reason why I and I chose to like have you talking about this kind of platform is because Yuri obviously has yep. uh, a Mustang. So he told me, you know, that you were the best one to speak to about it. But I I've already met it. you before that. And um, it was nothing but good energy. I didn't feel anything weird about you. Like you were explaining things to me when I was in the shop and I had nothing to do with the situation, but you were explaining yep. things to me about the car and so on. So um, I found that super cool and yeah, hell super yeah. informative. And I felt like if I wanted to learn more about the platform, always doors ask, open. You know Not a lot of people help me or can't even say that, but a lot of people, you know how it is. They keep their secrets. They don't want to tell the younger kids cause they think, you know, they don't give a shit, but yeah. you know, when anyone asks me questions, it's always open. I always try to answer it to the best of my ability because some people just don't share that information, you right. know? And I like talking about it. These things are fun. You know, it's my passion. I love building cars. You know, I like yeah. seeing people happy after a car's built, you know, like, like one of the, uh, the kids, this guy, Joe, he's got a, we did a predator swap. So the blower off Yuri's car, we put it on a GT, um, a Mustang GT 2016. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he was so ecstatic. 
He was shocked by how much power it was. He was shocked by the drivability that it drove completely stock. And, you know, seeing his face after that and seeing how excited he was, I was like, dude, that's, that's what makes it worth it to me. You know, yeah. um, that's what makes me keep going with this shit. You know, I agree. I yeah. agree. That's the same, similar to what you asked me before about the, the interview. Yeah. Got to keep passion Once you get that alive. reaction. Yeah. It's, dude, like, it's awesome. Yeah. It's fucking awesome. And I always tell him too. I'm like, dude, Dude, this shit's fast as fuck, bro. You gonna be fucking hyped, you know? They get in the car, they're like, yo! That's you know, funny. I love that shit, man. And then they, even the parents, too. Like, a lot of kids, I got a lot of younger kids that come with me, and their parents yeah. come. And, you know, I try to be very personable with their parents. And even their parents find trust in me and let me build their their children's car, you know? It's fucking it's dope as shit, you know? Yeah. I feel like the American um, car community is more, like, very family-oriented. Family very, very. Super. I, even yeah. when I came, when I was here last week, there was like a family that came yeah. in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, I'm actually doing some work with him. That guy, Frank, he's doing uh, built trans and all this fun stuff. And, you know, such personable people. And, yeah. you know, a lot of family men, women. It's, it's, it's yeah, a good she time. She knew about the car, too. Yeah, hell yeah. I was like, wait, she drives? Yeah, right? <laughs> She's got to fucking fuck you up, Frank. <laughs> yeah. I was like, damn, okay. <laughs> so funny. Shit. They're funny, man. They're good people. They're that was dope, people. though. That was dope. So, um, yeah, man, I appreciate your time. Absolutely. Um, thank you for the hospitality here. Of course, we're in this dope shop. Hope, hope you uh, get this up and running pretty soon. I mean, it's already, you're working out here yet? or uh, Not yet. Next week. Next okay. week. I've you, had still, it for, you still own that? Yeah, or? still got that other shop. I'm out of there January 1st. So we're okay. moving into here. I mean, ASAP. Get, get things rolling. Got a few builds coming up. Like I said, got the Whipple going on this one. Finishing up a turbo kit um, on another 10R80 car. Doing another GT500 blower swap on another GT, two ESS kits. I mean, it's nonstop. It's nonstop. So Dumb. a lot of fun projects coming up. Excited to share it with everybody. And, uh, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Really looking so forward to tell, it. So tell the viewers where to find you. So you can hit me up on Instagram, The Coyote House. Um, I have a Google page, Instagram. Um, best way of contacting me is either through DMs or just shoot me a call. Um, if you have any questions, concerns, call me, text me. I'll answer any questions, get you set up, swing by the shop, come hang out. We'll chat in person. So cool. Yeah, man. So um, if there was any information that you did not know, I'm sure people have, you know, yes. information on that. They usually comment things a lot of the time when, when we're wrong about something. Yep, absolutely. And it's good. I actually check the comments to see like, you know, to if they're fact checking basically. Yep. Um, so just be just be nice. You know, this is a disclaimer also because we were supposed to do that in the beginning of the episode. Absolutely. Um, and say like, you know, this isn't like, you, you might have to do your research a little bit. Too. Yeah, of course. Of yeah. course. Nobody knows everything. Yep. Just because you have a shop and you, you work on these cars doesn't mean you know everything about the platform. Um, so Absolutely. we're just here to educate and help. 100%. And based off of your experiences, you can share that with the people, obviously. So Absolutely. I appreciate that. Of course. Um, yeah. yeah. Buy some merch. Shit's fire. Yeah. <laughs> Shit is so, fire. I'm telling you right now. So yeah, appreciate that. Appreciate that. I actually the first or second person to see the merch. Um, yeah, we have hoodies in, t-shirts as well. Um, these are really good quality. Um, take, took me a while to to kind of source them, but they're really good quality. We're in New York, you know, it's cold. Most people who are watching are probably from the East Coast. I'm assuming mostly New York. So you guys definitely want to be wearing hoodies around this time of year. So definitely hit the link in the description, and you guys can cop some hoodies. Only limited amount. It's probably like about 46, I think it is. Yeah, very exclusive. We wear these. I wear them when I'm working. And obviously, my girl has this, uh, a hoodie and T-shirt as well. So, um, yeah, it's more like a <laughs> friends and family kind of thing. Um, but if you guys want, you can support the brand with these high-quality premium hoodies. And, yeah, I appreciate you guys. Love all you guys. Make sure you guys like, share, comment, and subscribe. And we will catch you on the next one. Peace.